Hello guys, I hope you guys are doing swell today. This is Lobo here. I hope that you will enjoy this new type of video that I'm doing. Well, this is more of a reaction video on Moonsault Slayer's take on Yoshimitsu and the what he believes to be incoming nerfs for the character. Now, I've already seen the video. From my perspective, there's going to be a couple of things that I'm going to be stopping. I'm going to be pausing the video here and there whenever he questions something about the character, and I'll add my own quips and my own commentary alongside it to then give you my opinions on the matter of what I think is going on. And yeah, that's about it. Let's start the video. So uh, what are you guys saying? Uh, it's time for chocolate. How you doing, Moon? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, hi, Moon. Uh, I'm struggling with Yoshi online, getting cooked. Yeah, bro, uh, Yoshi Mitsu is not as easy as people uh, make it seem. Yeah, the character is very powerful, but it takes a lot of skill to know where to place that power, right? People say just flash low. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to, I wasn't going to do this, but we're going to do what you're I somewhat agree with Moonsault Slayer. I agree that uh, Yoshimitsu is not exactly a very easy getter to pick up. Anybody that thinks that the moment that you pick up Yoshimitsu that you will be immediately skyrocketing to the upper ranks in the game are very much in delusion. There are so much more in, in this delusion that they think that Yoshimitsu is this very easy character to pick up, that you can do anything what you want against the opponent, and that you can apply all these neat tricks and knowledge checks against them and it'll work out perfectly. That is not the case. When I'm telling you that it took me half a year's time to really get somewhat okay with Yoshimitsu, and that was on Tekken 7, Half a year's time of me playing Tekken 7, playing Yoshimitsu, majority of my time on Yoshimitsu, and I've only managed to reach Raijin. That's the most that I can reach with Yoshimitsu. I was still struggling to get even further than that. And then when Tekken 8 comes out, with the overall knowledge that I already have with the character and the new tools that he has received in the game and the overall buffs that he has gained, I've managed to skyrocket in a way to the beginning of the rank to Fujin immediately because I know how to play the character. Now getting to Bushin, it took me a while, but it wasn't exactly very slow either. It did me immediately somewhat get to Bushin pretty quickly. And then from there to Tekken King, the Tekken Emperor, and now finally I'm Tekken God. So no, it's not easy to play Yoshimitsu and getting to whatever type of rank you want to get to with the character. It takes a lot of time and effort to learn the character and then really apply the strength that, that he has. But I will say though, that because Tekken 8 Yoshimitsu has a lot of stronger tools now in the game, that it will be a little bit easier now than it was before. That is the one thing I can say. Seeing here is Zhao Yu doing a attack and Yoshimitsu is spinning out of it. Hits Yoshimitsu, Yoshimitsu's minus seven. Yoshimitsu can spin out of them. Now this is a tracking move, right? Yoshimitsu can spin out of that. And everyone's like, ah, this is horrible. Minus seven tracking able to evade and spin nerf Yoshimitsu is what everyone says the reason why I think it's completely ridiculous is because if you look at the quote tweet I'm not downloading Tekken 7 again someone show me if he did this in Tekken 7 this person here did the hard work and seeing whether or not Yoshimitsu can do it in Tekken 7 and surprise surprise he can and this is the thing it's like people say like people say like oh Yoshimitsu can do this he's OP and in certain situations he's doing the same thing he was doing in Tekken 7 and Tekken 8 but now all of a sudden it's a problem all this is where I got very very surprised with what I saw on both the clip on Tekken 8 with Xiaoyu and Yoshimitsu and now in Tekken 7 I kid you not that I thought that homie moves would hit Yoshimitsu because I've gotten hit by homing moves whenever I do back three or back four with Yoshimitsu. So I don't know why it is that it's seemingly not working with Xiaoyu using her variation of her homing move against Yoshimitsu whenever he does his back four or back three. And on both clips, he managed to escape the attacks that she was throwing out. Now, of course, the only move in question that I can say that, okay, this makes sense that it should have evaded will be this move in particular. The, she does this move and Yoshimitsu escapes with back four. It makes sense that it will escape because it doesn't have any tracking. It's not a homing move. This here is a homing move. But my point of reference is that since Yoshimitsu is already spinning away and you see the distance that he is at where Xiaoyu is at, that that's probably why. 
that the move was evaded and it didn't manage to hit Yoshimitsu. If it were to be a little bit closer while he was spinning away, then I think that yeah, he would manage to get hit by the snake edge that she is using against Yoshimitsu. So this immediately tells me that there is something wrong going on here. I do not know that it, this is basically a nitpick of the player base showcasing exactly that oh look Xiaoyu does her homie move and Yoshimitsu Im immediately back fours away and escapes the attack. But I do think that there must be a problem with this. That there's a problem with his back four and back three. If this is happening with everybody else with all the other characters and you can easily see that the homie move should have hit because it managed to track, then this tells me that there's probably some kind of issue with back three and back four. Not in terms of strength, but maybe as a glitch or maybe it's some, some prob problem of coding. Because I do think that homie moves should hit Yoshimitsu out of back three and back four. That is the counter to back three and back four. But for some reason, Xiaoyu is whiffing. So unless it's happening with everybody else as well, then I have to somewhat agree with some people when they say, that Yoshimitsu is somewhat busted in this game. I can't know I can't say anymore that Yoshimitsu is A tier or A plus. He is S tier, if this is the case. It's just that from my anecdotal experience, I didn't see this issue. I've managed to get hit by homie moves many times. And I've gotten hit by moves that have a sane amount of tracking when I use back three and back four. But if this is happening often with a lot of players, then I gotta I gotta say that yeah, he is S tier. That alone makes the mess here. Let's continue. Because people just reach like things that was never an issue before. Now all of a sudden it's an issue and it's like, this gotta be stopped. They're going to destroy his spin and his spin has always worked like this. Like this is why my sidestepping sucks because I use the spin forever. Okay, that's crazy. You see that? Lydia does back four. I think it's her back four. And Yoshimitsu manages to escape with his back three. Oh, it was a back four. I believe it's back four. And escape the back four from Lydia. That is crazy. See, that's what I'm saying right there. So again, if we look back, you see that? It could be because the homing move in itself is too slow. And so, wait, that might be actually down forward three plus four. I could be wrong here. But the fact of the matter is, is that you see that he already escaped by doing back four. The attack animation hasn't really ended until very late as he was already spinning away. And it could be that the attack just whiffed, not because it didn't really hit. Like in the sense that it didn't reach Yoshimitsu. So he was already out of reach when doing back four. That could be the case. And if not, then yeah, this is an issue. This needs to be addressed. It needs to be nerfed. I have to agree with the community. If, they, if this is what's happening in Tekken 8 and as well as Tekken 7 before, then they need to nerf that. That's just too strong. If I see it again, I see it right there. It's like, it's crazy. Like it, it somehow managed to whiff, but it, it makes it, I keep seeing it as maybe the, the attack just whiffed because it's out of reach. It could be the case. If that is the case, then it's mostly just the fault of the player, not Yoshimitsu. Stepping sucks because I use the spin for everything. Like I, I've always spun out of stuff in Tag 2, Tekken 6, Tekken 7, Tekken 8. Like it's not a Tekken 8 thing where he can spin. I don't know why people are trying to attack that move so aggressively and also too you can get counter hit launched out of the spin the spin it doesn't count as movement it counts as an attack the reason why it counts as an attack is because it's attacking Yoshimitsu's health bar what that means is you can get counter hit and I feel like people are just so so biased and this is why I didn't want my character to be a part of this discussion at all because no one was saying like ah Tekken 7 this is horrible but now that he's top tier Tekken 8 everyone's saying I just hate that bro. I hate it and you see it all the time There was some post on Twitter where people were talking about his hop kicks and how it evades highs and lows it Yeah, I don't understand that why are people complaining about his hop kick his up forward four sorry up forward three <laughs> up, four, up forward three. I am sorry. It has high crush and low crush But there's other characters that have the same property with their hop kicks not all of the characters, but there are some characters that have the same feature. For one, Lars has it. Lars has it with his up forward three. It has high crush and it has low crush. So why is it that somehow Yoshimitsu is the only one getting reprimanded for having a good hop kick? And to be fair, it's not really all that good because it has really shit range. The only positive is that it low crushes and high crushes. So I don't understand that issue did the same thing in Tekken 7. This is just a moment where everyone's like, uh, I hate Yoshimitsu and this is like your opportunity to just like say like whatever about it. It doesn't- Yeah, I agree. I think that a lot of people 
also tend to overestimate the character again if the back three and back four is simply just a range problem and not really that the homie moves are not really connecting because it's some glitch or some shit yeah i do have to agree with the community that is bullshit but if not besides that people are way way too doom and gloom when it comes to yoshimitsu's gameplay and they immediately overestimate the character that he just it takes no overall skill to play i can play dragon knob today and reach tekken king in a matter of eight hours or less maybe less a whole a whole lot less because of how dumb easy it is to play the character and how strong he is same thing with Fengwei. i can play him and easily reach the ranks pretty easily in the game but do i want to state that the players that are playing them are just getting carried by the character and this hit or hit or miss i will say yes and no because it does take skill to play these characters you can't just immediately say that all oh, these characters can carry you to a god of destruction because it just it still takes knowledge experience and reactions to really play the characters that you're playing with and in the end of the day even if you're playing a very strong character you still have to learn how to play the game mechanically it doesn't matter if, if it's right it doesn't matter if it's uh something that he did in past games it doesn't matter like yoshimitsu is the character who everyone hates and now let's attack everything let's attack his hop knee let's attack his spin let's attack his back dash let's attack everything it's like come on bro this is exactly why i didn't want my character to be op because people just cry about everything yoshimitsu was described and Tekken 7 as a work hard for nothing type of character think about that work hard for nothing is how he was described first off a block below uh, is pretty good right also I've been using this move a lot this move is great like that you could do things like the counter hit low they fall for that as well um, you could do this move poison breath if they're trying to come in I've been using this move a lot this move is a, I've been trolling with this I've been trolling with that like crazy bro um, let me show you a clip hold on one two <laughs> three <laughs> I don't get how the harangue is simply just going for two toe kicks. The first one failed and he goes for the second one again. And he wasn't even at range to use it either. He probably thought that the Yoshimitsu was going to do the same something else, I mean, not the same thing, something else. And went for toe kick. I would have just immediately side okay and get away, just in case. It's not, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Good block on the low. Flash. <laughs> You know what I think? Okay, look, this is what I think the real problems with Yoshimitsu is. This is what I think they should nerf. If I was to nerf, if I was to death and I was gonna nerf Yoshimitsu, this is what I would nerf. I already said this before, but this move being a counter hit launcher, that's stupid. It should go back to just knocking down. Take I somewhat agree and somewhat don't agree. I actually like the fact that 1-1 one, one, with no sword stance or on heat can counter hit launch the opponent because this at least defeats the opponent from trying to press on you whenever you're trying to then apply some sort of pressure against the opponent. Because that's the one thing that I feel that Yoshimitsu struggles with the most is getting in and applying pressure. He's really good with mix-ups and really good at confusing the opponent with his movement and evasiveness, but he lacks pressure. That's the one thing that I feel that he lacks the most is pressure. And you can't tell me 3-1 it, it is the move to pressure your opponent with because you can duck the second hit and you can also sidestep it. Take away the counter hit launcher, just knock down. Um, I think this move... Uh yeah, I, I somewhat agree that if if they were to do anything to it, I guess just giving us the knockdown like before in second 7 would be fine. But I, I still like the counter hit launch in my opinion. It's too powerful on hit, right? It, it allows for some crazy oki. You do this move, it allows for crazy oki. They should figure out a way to nerf that. Yeah, I also kind of agree with this. The 4 1 plus 2 while in heat, especially when you're in heat. If you're near the wall, there is a particular tech you can do. Flashy Mitsu already made a video on it. And it allows you to catch the opponent off guard if once they attempt to side Okame, you can actually perform 4 1 plus 2 and it might actually clip them behind their backs, allowing you access to a heat dash into a combo immediately. Now, this doesn't always work. It really depends on how exactly the access point of the opponent is getting up from, because if they're facing slightly away from you while they're getting up, then yes, you can actually catch them off guard with the forward one plus two into heat dash. So I think they need to fix this and make it so that it doesn't really happen against players, because if you're holding back, you should not be hit by the move, right? That's what I think. This move has insane range. You see how far away I was and I hit the Oscar player? That has insane range. And it combos, um, it pushes the opponent far away to the wall. So that's another thing that I would nerf. No, I wouldn't really nerf this move. 
it's just one of the only moves you can use against the opponent to kind of pressure the opponent with and the fact that it can also wall splat and give you a combo right afterwards if you know what you're doing i don't know if you hear that this, the fucking police is outside it and you can see you can hear the sirens i i apologize i'm sorry so i don't agree with the fact of nerfing this move because again a lot of characters have a lot of useful moves that they can use to apply momentum and pressure why can yoshi have at least one you know so free one removing the overall push block and the reach I don't think that's a good idea, especially when the one weakness that it has is that it can be stepped if the first attack ends up whiffing and you can duck the move even on block if you block the first hit into the one, you can duck the one. Uh, something else that I just recently thought about as well, this move, I think that move should be a nerf. I think this move should no longer launch and it should go back to being a just a normal unblockable. Uh, I'm kind of fine with that if they were to make it into just an unblockable like it used to be in Tekken 7 and not giving you the launch but I feel like what they done with Tekken 8 Yoshimitsu with the Dragonfly 1 it actually gave it a bit more property more purpose it was only ever used to either catch up an opponent off guard if they had low health and then just you know go for Dragonfly stance go for one and then take the dub right take the win now it has a bit more utility now you can try to use it to scare the opponent and if they try to press buttons against you you can launch them on normal hit or if you're in heat sorry if you you can try to catch them off guard and if they try to press any buttons against you can counter hit them for into a launch and that's if you're trying to use it without heat with heat you can actually launch them on normal hit so i like the idea that this move kind of scares the opponent into either try to press or try to stop him from using it to interrupt him or they had to then respect it and block the incoming move because it also gives you a bit of chip damage can i turn off the counter hit properly i want to see if it launches in not counter hit yeah see I mean, I guess people complain about his flash. I don't know what else you can do to it. It's it's very uh, linear now. It doesn't work to the right. doesn't work to the left. It always didn't work, if that makes sense, the way I'm saying it. Okay, to the left to the right. In fact, it's only specific to the characters that you want to use it against, like Kazuya, for example, or Brian. Characters with, with very like wide positions, wide idle positions, you can actually go to the right side to them and land your flash. But if you're trying to go to the left side, you couldn't. This is the same thing with Tekken 8 and Tekken 7. It's no different. They already decreased the range of it. Uh, I mean, you could decrease the range of it more. You could decrease the frames of it or increase the frames of it. But I mean... I mean, like, if you do all of that stuff to the Flash, it's a useless move and no one will use it. Like, if you think about Tech Attack Tournament 2, did you ever see a Yoshi Flash in Tech Attack 2? No, because it was trash, right? So people will just won't use it. And I know that's what you guys want. You guys want Yoshi to not use it. And I mean, hey, like, if that's what you want, then okay, right? A move that I don't think they should nerf is this. You know how Yoshimitsu, Yoshimitsu uses that as a wall ender? Of course, this gives him very good damage. But I think if you nerf the damage or if you nerf the ability, to delay it what people will then do to get the wall um, at the wall is this I guess I should be doing this on the smaller stage huh here's like a standard Yoshi combo you'll see so 65 damage I don't think I delayed it properly yeah I did not uh, let's, let's try it again he's probably streaming this I don't know why the visual of the video is so so bad He's probably streaming this while he is recording it as well or something between those lines. Or maybe he also streamed it and then just took the, the VOD from his stream. So 78 damage. If you nerf that, right? Let's say, oh, that's OP, right? 65 if you don't delay it. 78 if you do delay it. If you nerf the damage on that, Yoshimitsu players will just do this combo instead. They will flash. Heat activate. They will do that. 72 damage and you get better Oki. You get better Oki off of this. So if you nerf the damage on that other attack, it then becomes useless and Yoshimitsu will start doing this. And if you think like, oh, we'll just nerf that too then. Well, then you're just killing the whole character. Like, where do you stop? At I somewhat agree with him. 3, 2, 1 plus 2 or delaying it to get more damage across, especially if you're in your no sword stance, is a really good tool. But nerfing the damage a component of the move just because he's dealing too much damage with that move alone doesn't make any sense. Because there's a bunch of characters in the game that can do the same thing or have their own type of wall enders they can use that deal significant amounts of damage. The one thing that he doesn't understand about the 3, 2, 1 plus 2 is that Yoshimizu can use it to mix up with 3, 1 or 3, 2, 1 plus 2. If you use 
use three, two, one plus two, and let's say the three gets blocked and they immediately guess that you'll go for the three, one, which is a high. They can duck it and of course try to beat you. But if they duck it and you're not going for three, one, and you're going for three, two, one plus two, the two into the one plus two connects. It's a guarantee string from the two into one plus two. Not from the three though. Three, two doesn't connect. Only the two into the one plus two if the second hit manages to connect to the opponent. And that does a lot of damage, especially if you're in the sword stance. If you're near the wall, a wall splash, it gives him a combo. So he even does even more damage from then on. That is why some people don't like the move. And the other thing as well is that if you block the one plus two move, the last move of the string, it's only minus 14. So even though it's minus 14, he will get punished with a 14 frame punish. And not many characters have really strong 14 frame punishes they can use against Yoshimitsu. If I was to nerf it, if, if anything, make it so that it's minus 15 on block on the last hit. I think that's fa somewhat fair because of how powerful the move is and you can the mix you can use with 3-1 and 3-2, 1 plus 2. So I think that's fair. At a certain point, you're going to kill the character. And I know that's what a lot of people want and you know, so be it. Like if you guys want to kill the character, then kill the character. But um, regardless, bro, I can win. Like I know people say like, oh, I carried and whatnot, right? But um, in my opinion, bro, or not even in my opinion, I was able to do serious work with Yoshimitsu in Tekken 7, and that character was trash, right? Um, so, regardless of whether or not Yoshimitsu is powerful, I can cook, which is why I never wanted him to be powerful, because I don't need it. You don't need power if you're, like, good. And I'm not saying, like, I'm good, good. I'm just saying, like, like I'm good for, like, you know, I can win online. I got Tekken God, right? So I mean, I got it too, and even though I got it, it's still something that, that I get a lot of flack over because a lot of players still hate when I play Yoshimitsu online. And I don't mean the people that watch my content, but the people that I fight against. Because I always get a uh, key chart, I always get tea bagged, I always get one and done if they win. And if I and if I win, they still one and done me. So it happens often. They don't like the fact that Yoshimitsu is how he is in the game. They don't like it. It was the same thing with Tekken 7, except with less one and done in because the game had infinite rematches. And you didn't immediately like rise up in ranks quickly, unlike you do in Tekken 8. So reaching Tekken God for me with Yoshimitsu was definitely a, uh, how should I say? I was very excited, very happy. But in the same time, players are going to immediately undermine your progress because you're playing a character that they don't like. It, it always happens in any competitive game. So they can nerf uh, Yoshimitsu and uh, I'll be A-OK. -okay. But I'm saying, like, as for the character, the other people who play him, as for the character's usage, it, it will it will fall off. I never cared about him being strong. When I first picked up Tekken, I saw the samurai with a sword, and that was it. All of the politics came way later. Bro, you're offended? No, it's not even offended. I'm just like... Yeah, see, yeah, this is why I don't talk about that one. I <laughs> uh, he's not offended. He's probably just aggravated is what it is. He's just aggravated that players are undermining his overall progress with the character that he like that he loves and calling him out as that oh he's just being carried by the character right because i can tell you right now that the same players that may say that probably play very strong characters themselves they either play dragonov they either, they either play Jin or fengwei or alisa or nina these are very strong characters in the game and so when they see a character that they think that's more busted than their own character they're going to call it out even though they could be, you know, very biased to what they're trying to say. And again, I could care less if you play Feng Wei, Dragonov, or any of these characters. I just don't like fighting them because they're very strong. But if you like the character, play the character. Play who, who you like to play. It doesn't matter. I think that was a stupid idea too. Him, him healing from combos. But see, this is the thing too about Yoshimitsu. This is what I said when the game first came out. I said that Yoshimitsu, in Tekken 7, Yoshimitsu was encouraged to turtle. Right? You turtle and you heal that way. You heal, you make space so you can heal. It yeah, I agree with that. I don't, I don't like exactly, I'm, I'm mixed when it comes to this, when it, for the changes that they have made with his healing properties that, oh, he, he can heal from his attacks instead of just backpedaling and playing defensive, which is how he usually plays. And that's how his playstyle is very predicated on. Now you have to attack your opponent to really heal. And with the chip damage system in the game, it makes even less sense to even go for meditation stance and go for Indian stance to heal back your health. Because it no longer heals your raw health, it only heals your chip health. But you can get back your chip health by simply attacking the opponent. What is the point in using these two stances? 
besides just using it to catch the opponent off guard. That is why they've, in my opinion, that's, that, that is why they've given him like his 3 plus 4 in Indian stance that now homes or that he can go into full crush on forward uh, 4 into Indian stance to use these tools because they essentially made these tools less important into his kit because they used to heal raw health now they don't so what is the point of even backpedaling and playing around with that style that he was very well known for but in Tekken 8 they don't want people doing that they don't want people turtling they want you to attack to attack attack so they took away his turtling and healing and they gave him healing through combos and uh, that ruined the character Th their vision of like let's make every character a rushdown is what made Yoshimitsu this way. He's not supposed to be this. He's not supposed to be a rushdown, but that's what they wanted this game to be. And as a result, like they made him a monster. Yikes! Bro could kill me. I believe. Oh no, you can't. Not after that. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh. Yo. That was crazy. What? That was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he goes for Kensho 3, he likes doing that move a lot with Yoshimitsu. I don't even know why people are getting caught by that so often. So yeah, that is the video. I understand a lot of the grievances that Moonsaw Slayer is stating. I, I for one, somewhat agree with a lot of the things that he, he is saying. I just don't agree with some of the nerfs that he's stating that should happen to Yoshimitsu. But in reality, the way how the character plays now, I really do think that he is in a very strong state. That's why I put placed him like around A to a plus tier but with the whole back three and back four issue that homie moves are not connecting him i would have to say that he is more s tier now if that is what's happening with a lot of players in their own sessions just that it doesn't happen often with me i don't know why it's not happening with me but it could be because they are not using the homie moves as often against me and it's probably because of that reason because back three and back four seems to escape the homie moves which is weird to me because Tekken 7, I didn't see this problem, but I'm seeing it often now on Tekken 8 where players don't want to use homie moves against me when I'm using back three and back four, and that could be the reason. So yeah, I have to somewhat agree with some of the community that yeah, he is more S tier now, if that is the case. If it's the case is, is that the move is simply just not reaching Yoshimitsu, then I don't think he's S tier then. He will still be what I think he is, where he's like A tier or A plus at best. So yeah, that is the video. If you guys like the video, give it a like or a dislike if you want to. Subscribe and see more of my shit. I do have a Patreon if you do want to support your boy. And yeah, stay tuned. Stay safe.